الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله الكبير again uh, you're indebted to God for this opportunity that he's given us and we should take advantage of it and <clears throat> get closer to God and and the fact that we are here today this is all due to God and his infinite generosity and mercy that the uh, test is not over today and so we are given another chance that through which actually we can we can redeem ourselves and get closer to God so <clears throat> uh, this is a, a a huge blessing and we should remember this and this is all by divine design and providence and uh, we are here at his uh, uh because of his mercy and his uh, infinite generosity and love that he has for us so <clears throat> and <clears throat> again as i always say gratefulness is a is a godlike quality and and we should be uh making sure that we follow his path and and we are grateful to him for for everything that he has given us and providing for us and uh especially during this month we have to double our efforts to remember god okay and, and so uh it's a huge uh favor that is bestowed upon us uh, <clears throat> um <clears throat> what i wanted to discuss today is that uh you know we are mechanism of worship and this what god is telling us in the quran and over and over and over he tells us about it that these are the uh acts of worship that you have to offer and uh and the mechanism for this is that number one priority that we must have in our lives is to remember god this is the number one priority and acts of worship in any form or any uh way that we do it is a mechanism by which we actually remember god okay so this month we we go through this act of worship which is called fasting for example okay we remember this from chapter 2 okay verses 1 183 through 186 So those verses are telling us that God is the one who decreed this for us and is also decreed for those before us <clears throat> okay so what happened was that when God says something there is a reason behind it and once we remember those verses that God is telling us then we know who has decreed this for us and and the one who is the creator of this god and so we remember god during this time and this is good for our soul okay the same with contact prayers god says remembering god during contact prayers is the best thing that could happen to you okay. so the reason behind contact prayers is that we actually remember god we mention his name we remember him when you give to charity you know that god has ordered you to do that he has encouraged you to go ahead and give to charity so when you do that especially during this month he says that those who can afford it they should also feed the poor and the needy okay so that commandment there that the fact is incumbent upon those who can afford it to to feed a poor and needy that act or that commandment is coming from god so we remember him okay when when we prevent ourselves from doing things that he has told us not to do we remember god any commandment that he's told us okay do or do not do is an act of worship to god so we are in that position that we actually 
have God in our mind. And the more we do this, the better off we are. We get to the point in our lives that we always think about God. And that's what God wants to make out of us. People and human beings who remember God all the time. That's the best thing that could happen to us, especially in this month. Okay. When he told us not to do any business on the Sabbath, we remember God. It doubles up during the month of Ramadan because you're fasting, and on the top of that, you're also not doing any business on the Sabbath. So what happens is that now this is, this is more of the same kind of action on our part that makes us, that make us remember God. Two things, okay? If we give to charity on that day, give to charity on that day, on the Sabbath, there are three ways of doing it. Okay? When God says, those who can afford it, they should go to pilgrimage, to Mecca. Okay? And in there, God says, you should remember God as even more than you remember your parents. And mention God's name during these days. Again, another mechanism through which we actually remember God. So all of these acts of worship, they are designed in there for us by God in order to remember Him. Do not forget him. And this kind of acts of worship, what actually they do, they actually get us closer to God. Because now we have God in our mind. When we, when we prevent ourselves from doing things that he tells us not to do, we are remembering God. Again, the two cases of, of those kind of things in the Quran, story of Joseph and Mary. Okay. They remember God. At the time they were that they, they were vulnerable. They remember God. Okay. So those kind of things, those are do's and don'ts that God is telling us. All of them are in the form of acts of worship. And again, as I said, the beauty of it is that he tells us, okay, and we've seen the far-reaching consequences, for example, of, of doing the Alpha Tab. Okay. How, how many different aspects it has in our daily life that we know things. God has taught us to to learn these things and, and has given us the knowledge so we would not be acting like ignorant people. We know why we're doing it. Okay? As I said, when he says fasting is the best for you if you only knew, when we were looking at it before, we were thinking of our physical well-being. Okay? Because God in the same verse, he says also those who are ill. Okay? They shouldn't fast, which is another commandment from God. So if you're ill and you're fasting, you are not obeying him. If you happen to have a cold, don't fast. But again, you remember him because he's the one who told you not to do it. Okay? So when he puts that thing in there, and he tells us that fasting is best for you right after the statements of illness, okay? People think, of, well, yeah, it's good for gallbladder and liver and this and that, the other, okay? And gets rid of all of the things, and all the, uh, um, you know, things that are making us sick, all the viruses and everything inside our body and just goes through and all the bacteria, cleanses us sort of inside, 
Okay? Of course it does. But that's not the only thing. Okay. So I think the best for you, because now it's your soul which is benefiting from this. It's a spiritual aspect of that that God is stressing. And now you're doing this and you are thinking of God. And that's the best thing that could happen. When you are doing the same thing during the prayers, you are mentioning God, you are remembering God, that time is a time well spent. And so, again, we have all kinds of extraneous stuff that could come in there and prevents us, prevent us from that. And we have to watch out for that. Okay. And we have to make sure that when we do these things, again, these are for the sake of God alone and no one else. Your acts of worship, your prayers, is for the sake of God alone. Your fasting is for the sake of God alone. Giving charity is for the sake of God alone, and not to show off in front of other people. If you go to Hajj and you can afford it, you should thank God and be grateful to Him for giving you that opportunity that other people do not have. And that should be again for the sake of God alone. All of these things that we do during our lifetime, it should be for the sake of God alone and no one else. It doesn't matter. A lot of people, they think that if you're well known and this and that, the others and... and Respected and all kinds of stuff. Other people, that's the success. That's not success. God says that the most, uh, the most, uh, the most person who is uh, keeping his desires from uh, from happening, okay. And that person is the most honorable in the sight of God. Okay? The most God-fearing one is the one who is um, keeping himself from his desires. And that person has the highest honor at God. The rest of it doesn't matter. The rest of it is irrelevant. If God honors you, who can take that away? And then God says, on the other hand, He says, once He does disrespect you, okay, who is going to respect you? If you lose respect in the sight of God, if you do bad things that He tells you not to do, and you lose respect of God, who is going to respect you? No one. So again, we go back to these things. And again, talk about this a lot, but I'm going to say it again, okay? You, you, look, at, you look at the history of all of these uh, prophets and messengers, okay? And, and for some reason, they are not in history books. For one reason or another, they are a very small mention in the history books. They were a blip in the history books because men didn't care. Men didn't respect them when they were alive. But now somehow they become the most well-known person in the world. Everybody knows about them. Why is it? Why is it that so many people know Noah, for example? Okay, he lived about 6,000 years ago, whatever. Somehow they know him. Jesus was a blip in the history of the Roman Empire. Okay? Muhammad was not known. He was an orphan. He lost his mom and dad as a baby. Okay? Mm-hmm. He lost his dad before he was born. So who is he all of a sudden? Everybody knows him. Why? 
because of that fact that they were God-fearing people. They kept their desires in check. Okay. So, all of a sudden, people know about these guys. Why is it? You have to think about it. Why? These other people, they have to really work very hard in order to be known by people. But somehow these guys are very famous. And as I said, if you look at the history books, they're just small blip in there. Okay? And nobody respected them when they were alive. Everybody insulted them. Very few people followed them. Okay. So what happened? Well, all of a sudden, everybody know, knows them. Okay. Because we go back to those statements of the world. Okay. That the honor and prestige is coming from God and from no one else. Okay. And then, and then you go back and you see that somebody sent Muhammad okay, and inspired the Quran to him. And he recited it and wrote it down. And then after so many years, 1,400 years, okay, several years so far, and after so many years, all of a sudden, all of this information is coming to us. Okay? And that is amazing. He kept on saying, be patient. Be patient. It's going to be there. So it doesn't matter. Because look, in the, in the greater scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Because they're all going to be transparent on the of judgment. That everybody is going to see it. And the liar and those people who fabricated things, they are going to be exposed for what they did. So that's how we should think. That's how we should act. And thank God for giving us these acts of worship that we are honored to have today in order to remember God. And that's the best thing that could happen to us. So we should cherish this month because there's an extra duty through which we can actually get closer to God and be honored by Him. Okay, I'm going to stop here and finish this unit. Allah will